Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, bear with me on this video just a little bit because I got a little bit of a story to tell about this Browning Auto 5 which this video is mainly about. Um, the story is about how I obtained this this firearm. It was kind of a fun story um, and uh, I was able to obtain it at a fairly good reasonable value I, I believe and uh, what the what I'd heard was a uh, through the grapevine um, people know I like to collect a few firearms and uh, the word got around that uh, through me through the grapevine that uh, a firearm collection was for sale and uh, actually I didn't know, know at the time that it was a firearm collection it was simply one firearm uh, supposedly a Japanese Arasaka and uh, they knew I was a World War II collector among other things and invited me to come look at that this was uh, a friend of a friend of a friend and it was his mother and it was actually her husband's uh, collection he, he had passed away she elderly lady she was in her late 70s and was just desiring to get rid of it so uh, just somebody would appreciate it for the most part and when I arrived at the uh, uh, the location I was driven there uh, so I'd be introduced to the to the people that had the collection it was literally a barnyard find or a barn find you've probably heard about that sort of thing happening people that buy high-end automobiles uh, find these uh, stored vehicles and whatnot that are uh, tucked away and kept for a long time and uh, dust covered and uh, they pull them out and they're worth a lot of money but uh, that wasn't exactly the case here but it was similar it was kind of fun and uh, I was taken to this location and shown this collection of firearms among them was this Browning Auto 5 uh, and I was quite surprised they had them all laid out on a blanket in in a barn that had been converted to a uh, shop by uh, the guy's son or rather the wife's son who was the the original owner was the the father who was a military uh, fellow a veteran and uh, collected some quite a few firearms I was surprised to see about 12 firearms laid out in a row uh, among them were things that uh, didn't interest me much like a uh, uh, an old uh, army san marcos uh, 44 revolver uh, just completely rusted out hulk wouldn't even turn and uh, i passed some of those by a mossberg pistol grip shotgun an old stevens pump shotgun uh, a whole array of firearms from old firearms uh, such as the stevens and the um uh, a Winchester and uh, several pre-war Remington 22s the Winchester was a pump 22 1890 but we'll take a look at that one later time and uh, uh, several other rifles uh, the Arasaka was not even there it was was not an Arasaka it turned out to be a, a Mosin that got M44 um, which was I also was able to purchase um, but when I saw it, I'd only brought enough cash really for one rifle and uh, maybe a little extra. And th the first thought was, I didn't bring enough cash. And because uh, I was no way I was going to be able to buy all the firearms that I would like to have had from that collection. And unfortunately, I was only walk away, able to walk away with three of them. Um, so I made a bundle offer on the three firearms and the top of the, the, the food chain in that was this Browning Auto 5. Now, this, uh, this is a uh, uh, a light 20, and uh, we can I can tell by the serial number. It has a uh, 72Z prefix on the serial number, which indicates uh, 1972 build date. And uh, the Z indicates it's a two and three quarter inch rather than the, the three inch Magnum. Um, you can see by by looking at it uh, it's amazing condition and in fact this gun appears to be unfired it was 
pretty much a new without the box however wish it had the box but a brand new browning auto 5 from 1972 So that makes it 47 years old if my math is, is, is that good that quick. Uh, so an unfired 47 year old fire. And that's I got the gloves on because I just don't want to get it fingerprinted. Now if you know much about Brownings, uh, if you're a collector of them, you know that, that you've got to watch some of these late 60s, early 70s FN uh, Belgian Brownings because they were built uh, with salt wood. Uh, that was a process they were running out of uh, uh, walnut and they switched to American walnut that was cured uh, through a process that used salt to dry it out and unfortunately the wood at the bottom of the pile would get uh, absorb the salt to a degree that it would uh, severely rust out your firearms when it was used after they'd set for a short while. Now this falls at the tail end of those salt years. Uh, not all of them are that way. It was mostly the high-end stocks and the superposed and Brownings of that nature. And there were other manufacturers that used that salt um, wood. Uh, I believe uh, Winchester had a few. Uh, Weatherby might have had some. Uh, but there were various companies, but Browning was the most prevalent, and you've really got to watch it when you buy those. And when I was looking at this, of course, I didn't bring along my tools to, uh, the one of the best ways to tell is to pull the, uh, the butt plate screws and see if there's any rust on them. And of course, you can just look around the edges of the firearm too, and see if you see any uh, rust forming there. Um... I have not heard of that much of a problem with the Auto 5s, uh, but I have heard tales of there being some. And one thing that concerned me on this gun when I first got it was I couldn't move the barrel in it. Now if you know these are a long recoil gun, and as you can see I can push down on it and move it freely now. Of course it's been safety checked, I don't think it's ever had ammo in it, except for maybe from the factory. But I couldn't do that when I first got it, and uh, so that made my offer drop quite a bit. I thought maybe it's a salt gun, maybe it's all rusted up inside. But as soon as I got it home, after I'd made my offer and brought them home, I pulled the butt screws perfectly clean, no problem at all. I pulled the foreguard, horror, the, the forend off, absolutely no sign of any rust anywhere. Now I haven't had a chance to, to test it. Um, yet yeah, I don't have the chemicals yet to test it and uh, to see if it, it is indeed salt free wood but I'm about 99.9% .9 certain that it is not because there's after 47 years you would expect some evidence of of that and there is none uh, the only reason the barrel would not move was because it had the factory grease in it still and that grease over the past almost 50 years had tightened up to the point where the the barrel was a little sluggish and uh, I put a little extra force on it when I got home and it uh, broke right free. I was able to disassemble it, pull that old grease out of there and uh, we've got an absolutely perfectly functioning firearm now. Um, will I fire it? I don't know. This is one of those hard calls to make. What do you do? Uh, the Belgian Brownings are, of course are a little more collectible than the, the Japanese versions simply because uh, they were the original manufacturer that John Browning set up his uh, manufacturing with. He went to Winchester with it. Of course, you can watch my previous A5 video, and uh, I explained that a little bit about how that FN came to be the Browning, uh, the manufacturer for these Browning Auto 5s. So, what a fun, fun little gun to shoot. Uh, let's go ahead, I'll pop the Pop the foregrip off here, or the, the fore end here. It's just a simple matter of, sorry I'm out of screen a little bit. Uh, you take the pressure off of it, this nut, by pushing the barrel down. And then uh, once you uh, unscrew that nut, you can slip this fore end right off. And that leads you to, I'll come up, go ahead and come on in here. Leads you to look at the interior of the gun and see how spectacularly 
uh, pristine and clean it is for a gun of its age. Of course, having never been fired, that's a good indicator. And you can see there's absolutely no corrosion whatsoever on uh, any of the metal no discoloration on the wood or anything to indicate any kind of rusting has been going on uh, the original instructions are still glued in place in there I was probably the first one to take it off from the factory so they are still readily apparent in there so there we have it um, and some very pretty wood by the way too uh, some very nice uh, grain in it kind of a uh, not quite a honey color but not quite a brown color either it's a real pretty uh, medium light stock very well matching get the butt stock up now it's not a hundred percent gun it was uh, just laying around in this in this converted barn and it's got a few little nicks on it as you can see and a couple of little scratches on the metal that keep it from being a hundred percent I'll bring it in and let you see the the engraving I really enjoy this engraving on these guns and you can see where it says 20 across the the top there uh, the later ones would have said light 20 uh, but they are all light 20s you can see the bluing uh, it's a little blotchy looking because I've it's got a little coating of oil on it so I'm going to store it away the vented rib and not a scratch on the barrel anywhere or anywhere whatsoever flip it over here so you can see the uh, the engraving on the opposite side of course John Browning's uh, portrait on the first side and how good a condition this uh, 20 gauge shotgun really is so what a fun find and uh, I will go over the the other firearms that I bought also at this uh, uh, collection buyout that I wish I could go back and <laughs> buy the rest of them and we will in the next video it won't be nearly as long because I won't have to explain the story behind these firearms. So uh, I'm sure you're going to ask what I paid for this this Browning. And once I explain to them how it could be a salt gun, I could only make an offer based on that assumption. I offered them $300 for this gun as part of the bundle. Uh, I threw out a, a total cash price, but the, it amounted to $300 for this uh, brand new Browning Belgium made Browning light 20 Auto 5 automatic 5 however you want to think of it as so anyway there you go thanks a lot and uh, we'll be back with uh, the rest of those firearms that I was able to purchase in that collection thanks for watching see you next time